Okay, so this is Mr. Bahali B or Mr. B. I am a retired teacher. I have been teaching calculus and math for the last 31 years at Cardinal Carter Academy for the Arts. Cardinal Carter students and staff, I say, gave me a lot of respect and say, shaped me to be a good teacher. These lessons online are dedicated to the previous and present Cardinal Carter students. So, and on the other hand, I would like to give these lessons because I would like to help all students in the world to have some help, especially if they have no tutors, if they are not. Okay, so I will start with calculus today. It means that I will not do every concept of calculus, but I will do whatever we need by the end of grade 12. I cannot remember all calculus sections we learned. So I will concentrate only on some. So, calculus was invented by two mathematicians, Newton from England and Leibniz from Germany at the same time. So, why they invented calculus? Calculus is math, which is a tool for science. We need calculus for every change we need. So, we start our first section, which is very important, which is called secants. And tangents. So let's see what a secant is. A secant is any line joining two points on a curve. This is a secant. If this is a secant, it's a line, so I can find slope of a secant. How do I find slope of secant? A slope of secant exactly the same way we learned in grade 9. A line, I need two points to find the slope of a line. Therefore, it is rise over run. Rise over run means the difference in y over the difference in x. Delta y over delta x. So, if this is the one we defined in grade 9 and 10, We'll define it with other letters in this section here. So let's see another definition of secant using another different letters. So let's define secant using other letters. If I have this curve here, and there's a secant line here, if this point is point P, this point is point Q. Let the x value here be A, therefore, the y value will be f at a. If I take this point here, if I call the difference between these two points h, which is special letter we use, and this will be a plus h. Therefore, the value of y here will be f at a plus h. So let's see slope of secant here. It will be the difference in y over the difference in x. In this special case, it will be f a plus h minus f at a over h, where h is the difference in x. And we give this one special name, it's called the difference quotient. So, Slope of the secant is the difference in y over the difference in x. In this case, we use special letter called h. h is the difference between the two points in x. So I can use this formula here and we call it difference quotient. So we have seen this one now. We know about secant between two points. Now we define another one called tangent, a line which passes through only one point. Through one point only. This is called tangent. Tangent is any line passing through on one point on the curve. So, tangent is on one point. To find slope, we need two points. Therefore, let's see. If this point Q moves around towards P and it becomes closer and closer to P, 
then we have almost only one point. So we say limit of slope of secant is equal to slope of tangent, which means that the secants, as P and Q approach to each other, they become one point and we call it slope of tangent. So to find slope of tangent, we have to have a limit. So as P, as Q approach to P. Therefore, this will be limit of F of A plus H minus F at A over H as H approach to zero. This is slope of tangent. Tangent is always at one point, and the point is when x equal to a. We'll use this a lot to find slope of tangent, and for now even we can call this one first principles. Okay, we'll see some examples of this, how we use this formula here. So, okay, now we'll see this example here. We know slope of secant would have been finding just two points, so that's easy. We know that from grade 9 and 10. This is new for calculus. So, slope of tangent would be at x equal to 2 for this curve here. So, I use exactly the same formula. Slope of tangent is f at 2, a equal to 2, minus f at 2 over h. So, to find f at 2 plus h, I substitute 2 plus h for every x on my original equation. Therefore, this will be 2 plus h squared plus 4, 2 plus h, take away f at 2, which is 4, plus 8, which is 12, over h. I have to write always the limit. Limit h approach to 0, limit h approach to 0. OK, so I have limit of that. Now I have to expand this. I simplify that, which means limit of h approach to 0 for this is 4h plus h square plus 8 plus 4h minus 12 over h. Okay, now we simplify the top. So, limit of h approach to 0, 4 plus 8 is 12, 4h plus 4h is 8h, and then we have h square over h minus 12. If our calculation is right, the number should be crossed out. There should not be any numbers left. 12 minus 12 must be 0, so those must be crossed out. So limit of h approach to 0, 8h plus h square. If I substitute h equal to 0, this will be 0 over 0. And 0 over 0 is not a number, it's called it indeterminate. Therefore, here I have to take h out. Limit of h, 8 plus h over h, h approach to 0. So h cross out is h. When I cross out the h, I can substitute h equal to 0. Therefore, 8 plus 0 is equal to 8. We do, we do this kind of things here. As we saw here, we saw something like if I have a number 5 over 0, 5 divided by 0 is called undefined. So undefined means that's it, we stop there. If it is 0 over 0, we call it indeterminate. So we have to do something here. We have to factor or we have to do some kind of work. So indeterminate is not undefined. So these are two different things. If it is 0 divided by 5, this will be 0. These are the three things we should know. So let's do another example. Find slope of tangent 
for fx equal to 4 over x at x equal to 2. So this is find slope of tangent fx equal to 4 over x at x equal to 2. Exactly the same way we use the first principles using from slope of secant, which is the difference quotient. So the slope will be limit of h approach to 0 f at 2 plus h minus f at 2 over h. In this case, it will be limit of h approach to 0 for 2 plus h minus 4 over 2 divided by h. So here we have so many stairs, so we have to simplify them. We have to simplify the numerator. The numerator must be only one fraction, not two fractions. Therefore, what we do is limit of h approach to 0 for 2 plus h minus 2 over h. Still, this is 2 over 1, so I have to make it one fraction. It one fraction, what do we do? So we say we must have the same denominator here, 2 plus h, 2 plus h. The common denominator between 2 plus h and 1 is 2 plus h. Therefore, we say limit of h approach to 0, 4 over 2 plus h minus 2, 2 plus h over 2 plus h. Over 8 means multiply by 1 over 8. I can do this one even. Now I simplify this. I have the same common denominator, same denominator. Therefore, 4 minus 2 times 2 is 4, negative 2 times plus h is negative 2h, over 2 plus h, multiplied by 1 over h. As I said before, this should be crossed out if we are right. So 4 minus 4 is 0, so limit of h approach to 0, minus 2h, over 2 plus h, Multiply it by 1 over h. So it's long using this way. So therefore, I can cross out the h with this h. So now we have minus 2 over 2 plus 0, which is minus 1. So therefore, the slope of tangent at x equal to 2 will be negative 1. OK, these are. More examples and then we'll have a shortcut later on to find the slope of tangent.